welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. Sean Foyt here. I'm with my friend Richard T. Jones, the actor, the amazing man of God, the just conservative, just fighter for America. We, we've been hanging out together here in Anaheim. And man, I am so encouraged by you, by your heart. Got to meet you and your, uh, your sons at the Rams game. Yeah. That was really, really cool. And I uh, asked you to come, and you're, you're welcome. You know, you were so kind in coming here and sharing your heart. I would just love for people around, across America, you know, I think that when they think of, obviously they think of Hollywood, they think of the movie industry, they, they just automatically think everybody's left, everybody's woke, everyone's crazy. And I'm like, no, 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 God has people in those industries. And just like we tell people in politics, like we can't just throw the baby out with the bathwater and say politics is dirty, it's gross, it's horrible, no one can touch it. We can't do the same thing with entertainment. Like we gotta invade that space. So maybe share a little bit of your story. How do, how do you feel called to that, that specific industry? And what are some of the things you're seeing God doing right now? What's amazing about my particular testimony is that, um, you know, I was, you know, I tell people when I, when I speak, I said, sometimes you find your calling before you, and that calling leads you to God. Yeah. So, um, although I always knew about Jesus, I really didn't walk with Jesus. I yeah. really didn't serve Jesus. Um, but when I first got on the stage to act, I knew like I knew, like I knew that this was something I was going to do for the rest of my life. Yeah. And because I got in my right lane, it took me right to where God wanted me to go, which was smacking the hem. Yeah. Um, now, when it comes to this industry, just like all other industries, just like he told Elijah, there's always 7,000. Yeah, there's come on. There's always enough people. Come on. So the fact is, what are you willing to do? Yeah. Where are you willing to stand? Because, yeah. unfortunately, people are trapped in a certain, they're, they're worried about, paying their bills, they're worried right. about uh, their livelihood, their kids' well-being. But when somebody stands for Jesus, because you have the Spirit of God, you cannot deny it. Right. You have to rise up with them. You see that every time yeah. you do an event. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. stand out there, hey, we're going out here. When somebody stands, you'd be surprised how many right. people flock to it. Right. So what God showed me early on, because when he came to me, he came to me in a very bad time in my life. And he showed me that movie theaters and, and television, they're supposed to be avenues of parables. Right. Everything speaks to God. Even the bad stuff. You can sit there. Even when I watch demonic stuff, I can learn about God in watching that, if I can see it correctly. If God shows my eyes, I can sit there and say, ah, because the devil's a copycat. Right. There's nothing the devil does that God doesn't do better. Yeah. The reason he knows how to do this, the little stuff he does, is because God, he learned it from God, but he perverted it. He's called the perverter. You know what I'm saying? So he yeah. perverted things. It's not that, um, so you will see um, a lot of demonic movies, but you also see a lot of spiritual movies. People don't understand, when you go to a superhero movie, you're looking at parables of who Christians should be. Right. We're all supposed to be Superman. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're, we're all, we're all the, the dark Avengers. We're, we're supposed to stand for righteousness. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, ah, I, you know, this new Batman that came out, his biggest thing is like, I'm vengeance. And you sit there and say, ah, but we're, but we're justice. We're supposed to go out and we're right. supposed to just you know, right. put judgment for the people of God. So you yeah. sit there and say, wow, when you look at these things, you look at the Avengers, they speak to qualities of who God is and who we are in Christ. And if we go with the right mindset, we'll find more about God in these movies. You know, mm -hmm. I always tell people, I say, God speaks to me. I go to the movies with God. I need to write a book about going to the movies with God. <laughs> because he shows me so much in a movie. You know, when you know, when he taught me about movies, he taught me he, he used Titanic as a as a as a um, <clears throat> as a as a foundation. And he said, look, why did he make a billion dollars? You know, I love having conversations with God. Most Christians don't talk to God. They just want to uh, ask God for a present or something. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. just, I want to pray and I, I, I talk, I talk, I talk, and they never listen. God's into communication. Yeah. So he wants you to ask him a question and then wait. That's what waiting on the Lord stands for. We yeah. wait for an answer. So I talk to God and I, and I sit there and say, he said, why did, you know, Titanic make a billion dollars? I said, 
I don't know. It was a love story. He said, what was the movie about? He said, I don't know, about Leonardo DiCaprio. I really didn't like Titanic at the time. I said, but everybody went to go see the, six, the, sea, the, the ship sink. And God told me something very special. He said, no, that movie's about prophecy. I said, what? He said, the reason it made a billion dollars is because the spiritual principle of prophecy is in that movie. And everything that, everything that I put forth is always blessed. He said, J Cameron doesn't know. He makes more movies about God than any other, and he's an atheist. James Cameron will tell you, I don't believe in God. And he makes more godly movies than most movies, even Christian movies. He made Avatar, which is about, which is about being born again. But, but he said, Titanic's about prophecy. The whole movie, we watch this old woman, we watch, and what does she do? She tells a testimony mm -hmm. about a man who saved her life. Yeah. How did he save her life? Is it because he put her on that little thing? No. He saved her life because when she was about to, because when she was cold he said, and she was about to die, he said, no, 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 don't do that. Don't say goodbye. He said, you're not going to die out here, Rose. You're going to live long. You're going to die an old woman in your mm. bed. You're going to have kids. He prophesied to her. Wow. And when he died and she was like, oh, my love died. I'm about to give it up. She remembered the word. Yeah. And she says, I won't. Because you remember, he said, don't let go, Rose. And she said, I won't let go. That's what gave her the ability to call out for the boat and be saved. So when we're watching this movie, what do we see? An old woman. Yeah. Telling the story about the man who saved her life, who's holding this precious stone. And she needed a ride back to the altar. We don't yeah. see it right. The altar was the Titanic. She needed a ride out there. That's why she got on that boat. So she can give her offering back to the place. Yeah. So it was all spiritual. And then what do we see her die? An old woman in her bed. So when we see her in the bed sleep, she actually passed away. And then we see the memories of the life led that he prophesied. Wow. The whole movie is about prophecy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you know what That's I'm saying? Amazing. That's why I made a billion dollars. That's yeah. why they're paid for. What's funny is James Cameron, what movie has he made after Avatar? Because his assignment was done. Yeah. His whole life, he'll tell you, I had a dream when I was 14 years old about these creatures. He mapped Avatar out his whole life. So his whole career was about making the movie Avatar. Wow. Made the movie Avatar. Avatar is all about being born again. A man who was crippled and stuff, but then he gets, he gets into a society that he finds love for the first time and they care for him. Yeah. They even have a tree of life. We see it wrong, but they go wow. through a tree of life. And then at the end of it, He's born again. And we're sitting like, ah, the whole, after that, he's like, I'm done. Just like wow. George Lucas. Yeah. After Star Wars, his whole, George Lucas, I had a dream about Darth Vader. And that, when he pitched it, people said, that's crazy. Yeah. He said, all right, I'll tell you what. Take my salary. Just give me the merchandise. Dude, fine. Are you kidding me? <laughs> he said, well, who's going to start? I'm going to use unknown actors. Yeah. Okay. But he talks about the force. He talks about the dark side. Right, it's yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, it's just yeah. showing the picture. It's a, it's a parable of a kingdom. What kind of things, what, 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 in what ways have you seen, especially recently, where God's moving in that industry? Um, I, I always see him moving in the industry. Yeah. I see him moving in, I mean, we had the whole Will Smith thing the other night. He's right. Max, Chris, <laughs> yeah. You know, um, ultimately, you know, people are sitting there like, oh, whether you thought he... He shouldn't have said the joke, which he didn't. Most people don't even understand the joke. And that's why he even tried to explain it to Will. After he slapped him, he said, keep your, keep my wife's name out your mouth. He said, Will, it was a G.I. Jane joke. So if I tell you a joke about G.I. Jane, just because you cut your hair, it's not about the hair. I'm telling you who G.I. Jane was. He said, he said hey, can't wait to see G.I. Jane too. G.I. Jane was a warrior. She cut her hair and she overcame every obstacle that was trying to prevent her be, to become a soldier. And she overcame. So what he was saying was, your wife's a warrior. She's an overcomer. I can't wait to see her movie. Wow. He missed it. Dang. Okay, that's why when... So we got Richard T. Jones. <laughs> we got we got, we got, got the scoop right here. This is why... The joke. Chris wow. got the joke. He, so many, he just wow. missed the joke. Dang. And the, that's why when the, when the people were all, he said, wait a minute, that was a good one. Yeah. And then he got back. He said, Will... It was a G.I. Jane joke, but he couldn't hear it because he was offended. Right. Because that's the bait of Satan offense. Right. So wow. he got offended, he couldn't Dang. hear it. 
So he said, oh, okay. So he said, and, the, and, and Chris, I, I told you, you can always find where God is in the peace. And what did Chris do? He, as a professional, he just stood up and said, okay, let's move on with the show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's like, boom. Because he understood something that he, but literally he was calling Jada a warrior. Yeah. Calling her an overcomer. You have alopecia, but you're going to overcome wow. it. I can't wait to see that movie. Wow. Is Will Smith done because of this? <laughs> no, I think, you know, there's redemption for everything. Yeah. He did apologize, ultimately. You know, his speech would have been, if his apology that he did on Twitter was his speech. Yeah. It would have been amazing. Um, uh, but, you know, hey, there's, what look, Will is, uh, there's redemption for everything. One thing wow. I love about Will is he said, hey, I, want, I hear God calling me. Yeah. And I want to become the man that God's calling me to be. Yeah. Yeah. That statement alone shows yeah. me, ah, you're in the right place. Yeah. We all lose battles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Offense gets yeah. us all at one time. Yeah. But um, what I see in it is, ah, a transition in what thing, what's going to happen. Because yeah. the one thing you said, you said, hey, there's always a line in the sand. Right. When something goes. God always right. has to prune. Right. Yeah. So new buds can form. Yeah. Because it's always about the new season. Yeah. So, hey, we're going. We're seeing a bunch of stuff happening. We're seeing things with Disney. We're seeing things with Fox. Whatever. Yeah. They're all going to happen. Yeah. But what you're going to also see is there's going to be a pruning. Yeah. Because without this, you wouldn't see anything. So yeah. without you standing in that place. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now things are going to prune off because you're going to get persecuted. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey. These are good things. You know what I'm saying? Look, if Jesus got it, you got it. Oh, you yeah, know it. The right place. Part, part, part of the grind. <laughs> yeah, part of, I always tell pastors, and they're like, yeah, they talk. Dude, that's part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you saw. It's actually, before. I mean, it's yeah, it is. It's, <laughs> Jesus actually said, hey, in this world, you're going to have hardship. Exactly. You know, or he said, I'm sending you out a sheep among wolves, which that's isn't right. very comforting either. <laughs> How do you, like in Hollywood and, and in that world, and, and you know, how how do they perceive you like, okay, so you're conservative, mm -hmm. you stand for family values, you're a believer, mm -hmm. um, and how has that journey been to be bold in those kinds of things in this environment? Um, you know, I always look at it this, you know, people are going to disagree with you. Right. People are going to disagree. I, I, I always tell them, I said, look, you know, I'm, you're not disagreeing with me, you're disagreeing with God. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm just following what God said. So yeah. it's like, look, I, I, I honor what God created. I, right. I honor certain things just because God created it. Not because yeah. I had anything to do with it or it's not my yeah. opinion about it. It's really, I try to look at God's opinion about it. Yeah. So um, when I hear the opinion of a man compared to an opinion of God, I'm like, okay. Right. I really have no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, okay, you can have your opinion because I'm right. still going to follow the Lord either way. Right. Um, so you're always, I'm, it, are there battles? Of course. Yeah. There's battles in every, even when I'm in the church, I got battles. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're always debating something. Yeah, you're always, totally. hey, let's reason together sometimes. Yeah. So, um, but because what I've come to find out is when you stand your ground and when yeah. you stand firmly, and yeah. confidently, yeah. And peacefully. Yeah. People might not agree with you, but they respect you. Right. And they honor your position. Right. Hey, I don't agree with you. I don't yeah. like it. But hey, I honor the fact that you, so you don't feel you don't budge. Right. right. So you don't feel like some of those other guys. Like I've I've had this conversation with John Voigt before, okay. or, or, or 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 <laughs> James Woods. I don't know him, but okay. but you know those guys have kind of felt like the whole industry was like forget you man like you're right. for trump you're for this you're for whatever and it was like a very divisive thing you don't feel like you feel that as much i don't feel as much because one um god hasn't really called me to that arena i think as as john as as, as john voight got older yeah god was pushing on him more about right. saying hey i yeah. need you to get more in the forefront right yeah yeah this thing. yeah um i haven't got there yet i know god is gonna push me yeah. sooner or later um so when you get there, you're going to start getting isolated. Right. Now, John Boyd is one of the few that stood up for Trump and all that, and he still works. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of them, once, bread. You, yeah, once you go on that side, be, because, and that's why I think God was pulling, because he is, um, he's put in such good work over the years and right. made himself such a good commodity. Right. 
whether they agree or not, they're going to be like, look, okay, I hear you, Stanford, but hey, you're still good. You're still right. going to make us money, so we're going to put you in here. Right. Um, so I just think, um, well, I believe, you know, everybody's going to have their place. Right. And what God has assigned you to do, when you follow that area, you're always going to be successful. Yeah. So if he takes away one thing, he's adding something right. else. So I don't fear what's going to happen to me if right. I do this or if I do right. that. If I know God has led me in that direction. Right. Then that's the place to be. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. What uh, What are your thoughts on you know the the it, it seems to me like and I think if you look from a viewership standpoint, especially like the Oscars for example. No, you had the Chris Rock Will Smith thing, but that was still the second least watched Oscars in the history of America, That's and right. the one before that was was the worst. Yeah, right. So there seems to be this thing where a lot of culture is tuning out. Mm-hmm. Do you see that trend continuing, or what? What? What's your thoughts around that? Yeah. Um, I mean, do you think basically? I feel like that a lot of America is saying there's a disconnect here. Mm-hmm. Like you're doing the uh, you're you're saying you you these are the same people you know advocating for the vaccine, telling people that they're you know I get hammered by some of those guys. You're a super spreader. <laughs> oh, if, you, yeah, if, you, if you if you yeah, but but yet you go to movie sets and you don't have a mask on. Mm-hmm. You go to you go to you flee to states. Where the laws are lax. Yeah, so you can chill. Yeah, so you can no chill. Case, no, but, yeah. Ah, we're not talking about you, Kevin. No. <laughs> okay, but go ahead. I'm sorry. No, but it seems like there's a, a real disconnect from, like, your average American to mm. the Hollywood elite, and that gap's only gotten bigger. Um, the truth of the matter is when people try to force things on you, yeah. you're going to naturally see distance. Yeah. So one thing about... Um, the Hollywood platform right now, what you see with a certain a certain sect of Hollywood, they're trying to force their belief system on Christian right. Christian people, which are all, automatically is going to separate you from. Right. It. And even if you're trying to force your belief system on people who are unbelievers, right. it's going to separate. You. Right. Yeah. So what you see in the Oscar is the reflection of that. Right. When you have all these people saying, "If you don't do it like this, then you're you're super spreader. You're causing the right, virus right, to right, last right, longer." Yeah. What you're telling them is like, "Ha! It's either your way or no way." Right. You know everything, although you're not a doctor, but I'm gonna listen to you. Right. Why is everybody following Bill Gates when I said, "Look, if you're gonna tell me something about the internet, I my all ears." But if you're gonna tell me about vaccines, dude, when did you get a medical degree? Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Why are you pushing vaccinations around the world? All right. That's a plot. Yeah. You know, we gotta understand we're not we're not fighting against flesh and blood. Yeah. But, but spirit, spiritual principalities. Yeah. So when I understand that, I know he's just a pawn. Right. I know these people are just pawns. A lot of this stuff that we see, they're just pawns, unfortunately. Yeah. And but we have to be wise enough to look at it and say, ah, okay. What is the devil doing in this situation? Right. And how do I counter move this thing? Yeah. Because the devil is always trying to put you on his side. Yeah. He wants you to put you, he wants to offend us. He wants to get us in a place where we're going to lose the battle. Yeah. And we got to remember what side God, Jesus always told us to be. Right. Because that's the way we keep our heads. We yeah. can't lose the battle. If you are weak and you get, there's nothing like the word of God. There's nothing like the scriptures to bring yeah. you back. The Come devil on. can't fight it. Come on. You know what I'm saying? I, I get back to the scripture when I'm weak. Just like when Jesus was 40 days fasting. He was weak. And the devil tried to tempt me. He said, nah. Yeah. Let me just get back to the scriptures. Because that's on. a safe yeah. place to be. We have that. So, yeah. um, so, I don't know if I answered the question. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, no. I love it. I love it. I but, lo- you know, I just, I, 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 I believe that, you know, the more you see the enemy force things on us, the more evident you're going to see, ah, wait a minute, this is wrong. Yeah. This is not, so even with the Disney thing where they're going, they're trying to force something on us. This is what we're going to do. We're going to force this issue. Right. Wait a minute. I thought you're here for the people. Right. Yeah. I thought you're here for your fan base. Yeah. For your consumers. Yeah. But now you're telling me what you want. You want your consumers to believe what you want. Right, right, right. So now you're going to get a disconnect. Right. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And that that only makes the gap bigger between those guys in America because even if you look at polling, I mean, you know, I got a lot of friends that do polling. Even if you look at polls, even on the right or the left, people don't want their kids sexualized. Like America doesn't want that. And so... That's what even blows my mind. Even if you're creating a business that caters to them, you're automatically, you're going to alienate people. That's right. That's you know, right. but they're so moved by that agenda. 
It's like weird, man. It's like it's overcome it's a them. It's a spirit. It is a spirit. It's a spirit that they can't control. It, let's be honest. It doesn't make sense to them either. There's no way this can make sense. Oh, yeah, we're going to do this. If it's not broke, why are you fixing something that's not broke? Right, yeah. This What you've been doing all these years is successful. Why would right. you change that? Right. Also to enforce this. That is a spirit whispering in their ear, leading yeah. them to decisions that they wouldn't normally do. So what do we do as, as parents? What, what is your encouragement as parents, as, as Americans? Well, the first of all, you always got to get on the side of God. So we got to get instruction from God in that sense. Yeah. But then you just, you stand just like you guys are doing. You have to stand for righteousness. Yeah. But standing for righteousness is not just going out there to protest. We got to turn them off. Come on. Yeah. That's only, you got to hurt the pocketbook for them yeah. to say, ah, because one thing you're going to know, CEOs come and go. So when they make this decision, it's on these, everybody in that room that got leaked, they wanted that for a reason. They're like, hey, yeah. these are the people that came up with this idea. So as soon as the numbers drop and they stop losing money, they're going to squash the idea and those people will be fired and somebody has to replace right. them. Yeah. So we got to understand, as soon as I, as soon as we turn them off, and we kick out... Cancel your subscriptions, you know baby. Exactly. You've got to cancel your subscription. And then they get cast out. Now there's room for God to put more people in there. Yeah. Yeah. People with insight. The people that follow him. Yeah. But until we cast that thing out... Turn it off, man. <laughs> Turn it off. Yeah. Cancel this subscription. Because that's what, they're, that's what they think... It's the bottom line. That's what Christians... That's what they think Christians won't do. They be like they, they can scream and yell and huff and puff just like the wolf. Are they really yeah. gonna blow this house down? Yeah. Are they really gonna take back these bricks? Yeah. The only way you destroy that house is actually a house of straw, but our breath is not big enough. Right. But as soon as you take away the subscriptions and you start canceling, the, and they start losing money and millions and millions, they be like, hold up, it wasn't that serious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, wait a minute. You guys are fired because that was a terrible idea. Yeah, totally. Okay, now, yeah. how can we get these people back? Right. Now we now God has these Christians or the people led by his spirit to come in there. Yeah, come on. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. now we, we change. And, that, and that is, that is, there is a reformation call. And I feel mm -hmm. like that that's, that's inherently, you know, it's like what we do with Let Us Worship. We, we love to see people get healed and saved and set free and delivered. Mm -hmm. what, I, what I long to see with Hold the Line is people encouraged to go back into the industries mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 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 and literally hold the line as, you know, the Bible, as believers, taking a stand. And so uh, we're so thankful for you, man. And I want to, I just appreciate you coming on. I appreciate your friendship. Any last words you want to share? No, just love God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love Jesus. And don't be ashamed of him. Come on. You know, I think. Come uh, on. The people, I think people, they, they, they misinterpret loving people. It says love, it says love other, it says love your neighbor as yourself. So if you don't love God, like, if you don't love God like you love yourself, I mean, you've got to love Jesus. Yeah. And then you got to be non, non apologetic about it. That's what true humility is. To do what God has called us to do, non apologetic. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? If, if I can do it and I can stand for him, why? Because I'm defending my God. I'm standing for my God. Yeah. Period. If you don't like it, if you like it, awesome. If you don't like it, hey, that's on you. Awesome too. <laughs> but I'm firm in my conviction, my love, and my belief. Love Jesus and be happy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be happy loving Jesus. And yes, you're going to but you, you're going to get tribulation and trials, but you're just going to get that anyway. Yeah. I always tell people, it's like, dude, I've seen, I seen Muslims, they go through hard times too. <laughs> you know, you're going to go through hard times. Why? It's just in the cards. It ain't ever going to be just easy, 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 yeah. easy. Yeah. So, hey, so you might as well love Jesus and just stay firm in that Come and on. let the tide turn. Because one thing he promised you, if you, if you follow him and you walk him, all things work out to our good. Come on. Amen. Thank you, That's man. Thank, Thank you, you, bro. <laughs> That's good. Thanks, man. Awesome.